we have uh, limited uh, evidence-based information about the use and benefits of the supplements, in particular talking about multiple sclerosis, I think more studies are required in this world to confirm the benefits. Um, I think what I say often to my patients is that, uh, you know, they, they consume various different uh, vitamins and supplements themselves. And I always say that you're not going to harm yourself with it it's probably going to make your urine a bit more expensive more than anything but some of the vitamins have some um, anti-inflammatory properties and some of them are good for general health in general so talking about the most common vitamin that people are consuming is vitamin d and you know, some evidence suggests that vitamin D supplementation can be very beneficial because a lot of people with um, MS are vitamin D deficient. Because, you know, we talk about the British people, you know, it's a very dark country, not necessarily we get a lot of sunshine exposure. So that leads to people have vitamin D deficiency. You know, a lot of people work in the offices, spend less time outdoors and and that all contributes to the, you know, having vitamin D deficiency. So to improve the bone health, vitamin D plays a key role too. So, so I think um, some uh, evidence from last year, Ectrims in the Boster session has been presented that vitamin D has got less effect on disease activity and, and doesn't prevent people from having a transition from clinical isolated syndrome to relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Some historical previous uh, studies suggest that the there was some benefit uh, taking vitamin D in prevention of this. So I don't know who to believe at this time, Amish, and I think we need to, a bit of more, more data on this topic. However, I would like to strike the importance that vitamin D is important um, for the absorption of the calcium from the intestines, from the guts, for maintaining adequate levels of calcium in the blood. Um, however, the vitamin D increases the calcium absorption in the, in the guts, and as a consequence, um, by increase the vitamin D um, level, and that could increase the calcium level in the blood. And if you have excess of the calcium level um, that is not properly utilized by the bones, the accumulation uh, in the soft tissues can cause more harm. Vitamin K is essential for the activation of the protein called osteocalcin, which helps to incorporate the calcium into the bone matrix. So without the vitamin K, osteocalcin remains inactive and cannot properly bind the calcium level. So as a consequence, you get uh, maybe weaker bones and more calcium floating in the bloodstream. So vitamin K helps to to prevent the buildup of excess of the calcium in the soft tissue. So, so when you purchase the vitamin D, so make sure that it has got plus vitamin K because they work together to ensure that, that there is a proper calcium um, utilization by the bones and doesn't accumulate the calcium into the soft tissue. Now, the other vitamin that uh, people quite often consume is uh, called vitamin B12. Um, just bear in mind that multiple people choose now to be vegetarians or vegans. And B vitamin B12 in particular, is, is uh, it's coming from soil and usually animal uh, products. So if you're not uh, eating meat, so this is an essential vitamin supplement for you to take. And, and quite often people have vitamin B deficiency already. And that contributes further to the fatigue and cognitive impairment. So taking vitamin B12 really could help to improve these symptoms. Now, uh, a lot of people discussing around antioxidants and one of the strongest vitamin is a vitamin form of the antioxidant is vitamin C. And it suggests that uh, it may have anti-inflammatory effect in, in our bodies. And of course, more research is required, and particularly when we're talking about the MS. Alternative antioxidant that people consume is vitamin E. Um, some evidence suggests that uh, vitamin E has got a neuroprotective effect 
And again, very weak evidence. We still need to explore this evidence, but it probably wouldn't harm you if you consume that. There are some anecdotal evidence and, and some emerging evidence that it may reduce the disease activity, but it's not robust uh, data to, to confirm this evidence. So, so, but anecdotally, people have less disease activity if they are consuming omega-3 uh, omega fatty acid. Now, omega-3 fatty acid, is, it has got a, a very positive effect in cardiovascular diseases. So it prevents the accumulation of the bad fat, which is cholesterol. Um, and, and, um, and, and it's something that prevents from having an active inflammation on the vessel wall once the cholesterol plaque is, is, is uh, created and, 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 and if you develop it. Some people have a congenital uh, cholesterolemia, which is an increased level of the cholesterol in your body. So making sure that uh, you're still on the good diet and maybe taking some omega-3 supplementation is, is something to seriously consider as a prevention of the cardiovascular events. Melatonin is, is something that people are considering taking for insomnia. Melatonin is, is, is in the USA, you can buy that over the counter without any prescription. It's, it's like a hormone that regulates the sleep and wake cycle and helps to improve the sleep quality. And, and um, it's, it's something that is an, it's a natural um, product that is produced in our bodies anyway by the pineal gland and it, it, in response to the darkness. But you can take that as a synthetic product to regulate the sleep and wake cycle and improve the sleeping quality. There are some studies to suggest that um, it really plays a key role in insomnia, also stress and, and poor sleep hygiene and other health conditions. Um, it has got a, some sort of an antioxidant effect in our bodies and also modulates the level of the certain neurotransmitters, which is a neurochemical in our body, to improve that sort of a, a good quality of, of sleep. The problem with melatonin is when we buy as a supplement, um, we don't know what the concentra actual concentration is in that, in that particular supplement uh, or, or tablet or capsule that comes this, this medicine or supplement. Um, so just be very careful. And, and if you are considering consuming the melatonin, um, it really needs to be a low dose as a starting point because five milligram or 10 milligram, if the five milligram is effective, so you shouldn't be consuming 10 milligram. And, and there is no evidence that 10 milligram can be more effective than the five milligram dose. Magnesium, um, in particular L-threonate, um, T-H-R-E-O-N-A-T-E, L-threonate, is a specific form of magnesium that has been shown in some studies that have a better absorption and penetration into the brain than other forms of the magnesium. And this uh, supplement is very, very helpful for um, ability to improve the nerve function and also some evidence suggests that it can reduce the inflammation that, um, that is powerful uh, vitamin supplement if you have muscle spasms and some sort of uh, problems with falling asleep. Um, it's, it's really powerful. However, uh, you need to consult with your healthcare provider before starting any supplement, and in particular, let's say magnesium, because it can interact with uh, biphosphonate, which is a a medicine that is being used in osteoporosis treatment and other bone diseases. Antibiotics, certain antibiotics can, uh, can, can have an interaction with magnesium. Other muscle relaxants, you know, a lot of people are on baclofen and tizanidin, dantrolen, pregabalin, gabapentin. These are antispasmotic medicine and neurochemicals. So you may have an interaction, you know, with magnesium. So some blood pressure tablets, um, magnesium can interact with um, so for example, calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors. So as a consequence, if you take the blood pressure tablet and magnesium on the top, it can lower further blood pressure and you may become more dizzy and, and, and generally unwell.
valerian root um, it's a herbal supplement that people use uh, for centuries to promote their relaxation and improve the sleep quality um, it's sort of a, has got um, an extract um, and, and it comes as a form of the capsule or tablet it's not fully understood how it works and and how it interacts with our GABA system, which is gamma aminobutyric acid system. A lot of drugs are built on this on this uh, chemical. Um, it's a neurotransmitter that reduces the neuronal excitability. So people, the neurons are less excited about things if you consume val valerian root. But again, more research is required to to see the the actual effect, and it might be harmful if you're if you're overdoing things with all these supplements so being mindful and and thinking about what other medicine you take you know benzodiazepine group medicine that already gives a sedative effect and if you combine that with the valerian root it's not good for your body and 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 your health um, alcohol you know if you combine the valerian roots with alcohol can increase this even further sedative effects and and loads of drugs that we prescribe in our clinics are metabolized by the liver so and if you start consuming loads of other vitamin supplements so maybe you're just you know overloading your liver function so so being mindful and 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 careful you know in in terms of your choices another supplement if i could class this as supplement is a cbd um, compound um, it's derived from the cannabis plant and it's been found to have a range potential therapeutic benefits such as reducing anxiety improving sleep and and a lot of people purchase that um, over the counter these days however more research is needed to fully understand the effect of the cbd on on sleep and and i think it's 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 important to to know where we buy, what we buy, and the, what the concentration of the of the CBD um, we we buy basically, because it's not clear often. So I have to strike the importance that um, there are some studies again to indicate that actually the CBD can affect uh, more wakefulness. And there are a group of people that when they take the CBD, they're actually not sleeping at night time. And why is that? Because it has got uh, some stimulative effect in our brain. So I think, you know, you may try and see uh, if this CBD oil at nighttime keeps you awake. So assume that the effect on your body the CBD has got is more stimulant. And you may consider if you have a high level of the fatigue, you know, you may consider taking CBD in the mornings to see whether that brings more, more attention, more alertness, uh, because the effect is, is been documented and has been researched in the past. So, so really think and, and see how, how does it affect your, your alertness and wakefulness and, and whether that causes drowsiness or not, and use that for for a different purpose, depending on how, what the effect is, in particular on your own body. Lion mane, which is a, a mushroom, <laughs> it's it's an interesting one. Uh, some studies suggest that it may improve uh, neuroplasticity and cognition and memory and performance. But again, it's difficult to talk about this supplement at this stage. Um, some anecdotal evidence suggests that uh, it can help uh, people with a stroke to recover quicker after they had a stroke. Not many research we've got uh, in multiple sclerosis, but I know patients of mine, they do consume the Lion's Mane supplement to improve their mainly cognitive uh, function, to be honest. And um, it's probably not going to harm you, but... Uh, it, you know, you, you have to carefully consider where you're buying from, what effect it is on your body and, and how it's all feeling, you know, whether that gives you more nourishment, more positivity, more positive effect, or actually it brings more symptoms. Like, you know, some of the, of the patients of mine report that magnesium causes or vitamin D causes more constipation. It's not listed as a side effect, but it may cause these symptoms. So, so you shouldn't be consuming and continuing the, the vitamin supplement if it causes a lot of other extra symptoms for you. Supplements and vitamins checklist. 
Will it interact with my other MS treatments? What research is there? Tell your MS team that you're taking it. Try writing a research diary documenting what you're taking and how you react to it to see if it helps you or not. Thank you.